Welcome, everyone, to a Pac-12 chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Jalen Clark from UCLA. And Jalen, uh, Pac-12 Media Day, of course, we had Jaime Jaquez, Tiger Campbell, talking about the one-two punch, the experience. And after three games, the leading scorer is you. Uh, <laughs> so clearly the headline was missing. Um, but obviously all three of you are playing well. Uh, but what do you attribute to your early season success, averaging 17 a game? I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect that either, if you know what I mean. Like, we came out after one game. I was like, cool, two games, cool, three games. It's like, okay, well, maybe I have to just keep going and sustaining this. Um, I feel like when you watch the film, I've, like, I, I've been watching a lot of basketball, like a ton. And a, a lot of the ways I've scored are out of the offense and then transition. My defense creates a lot of transition points, and that's stuff that's not accounted for, really. But I do feel like Jaime and Tiger are going to start picking it up fairly soon. Like they're both all American candidates. That's not by accident. You, we, me, and you have both seen what they're capable of and what they can do. And like I tell them, I feel like they're gonna have breakout games really soon. Well, let's be honest though. Uh, if you have three, and I know you guys have more than that, but if you have three reliable scores, that's just gonna make UCLA even more dangerous. So, no, what has sure. changed here in the first couple of weeks of the season? You know, within this group, within the coaching staff, to say, wait a minute. You know, we've got multiple options here to be effective offensively? I feel like, first of all, the unselfishness. Um, we all like playing with each other genuinely. I think it's shown. I think we're a funner team to watch this year. Um, it's just, like I said, just the unselfish part. We don't mind passing. We see it in practice every day. Tiger may go off one day. Jaime may go off on another day. And because how the teams are split, we're forced to go ahead and work on our offensive games because we don't like me and Jaime are always on opposite teams. Tiger and um, Amari are always on opposite teams. So when we get in the game, it's like, Oh snap. Cause he's used to going in practice. He's used to going in practice. If you go, know what I mean, so then it just, everybody can go if wh whoever is falling asleep on defense or whatever. Amari can go to the rack, can shoot the three. Tiger can go to the rack, shoot the three. I can, Jaime can, like it's one through five. It's a problem. In what way have you gotten better? Uh, I'd say, um, first of all, just maturity. I, I look at this thing as like a business. Now I'm not just out here, la la land, just running around, happy to be here. Um, I know I got to be an impact on this team if we're going to go far this year. Um, I, the amount of work I put in before I used to just be in the gym just to be in the gym. Now I'm, I'm getting done in an hour, which I would have gotten done in three, if you know what I mean. I'm way more proficient with my time. So I just feel like just mature maturation all around, if you know what I mean. I know I know what I'm looking for in the court. I'm trying to avoid bad shots, bad turnovers. I know how to replays defensively. Like I've been here long enough to where I can just go out there and play. So playing with that purpose, even in practice, when you're by yourself, obviously that's really key. All right, so uh, clearly you guys are going to step up in weight class. You got an Illinois team that is playing really well, uh, but they haven't really been tested yet. They've been playing at home, but this game will be in Las Vegas. Uh, they've got a lot of pieces, especially pieces from the Big 12 uh, in terms of transfers. So they're going to be very physical. How do you beat the Illini Friday night in Vegas? I feel like we got to match their intensity. You know, the Big 10 and Big 12, those are more physical conferences. They let them, so we know where they're going to come in, throwing punches. We got to punch back. I feel like we set the tone defensively and force them to go ahead and get in one-on-one -on -one situations and try to beat us in ISOs. I like our chances, and especially getting out and running. You know, and one last thing, Jill, I, I know you don't want to dismiss who you've played, but how much can this game and this weekend's tournament be a good barometer of, okay, really, where are we right now? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. And like you say, you don't want to discredit nobody we played before, but it's huge, especially with what is going on with the Pac-12 games right now. I mean, we're all seeing it with the swag. I'm proud of the HBCUs was able to do what they can do. Like, of course, me and being Black and my parents going to a HBCU, like, that's cool to see. But it's also, I'm thinking in my head, too, when it comes to tournament time, all of that's going to come into effect about how many team, Pac-12 teams get out. So, like I said, um, the top Pac-12 teams, we got to push it and show this isn't a punk conference. This is this is where good basketball is still being played. So, you know, it, this this thing is huge. Yeah, and I will say this. Credit to the Pac-12 because other leagues do not go to HBCUs. No, they don't. And we've seen this historically that if you have a home game, I don't care who you're playing, you get a better chance to win. Yeah. So clearly a lot of credit to them. Uh, Jalen, I appreciate it. Look forward to watching you this weekend in Las Vegas. 
I appreciate it too. See you in Vegas.